Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. When I started this podcast in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women business owners, creatives, and entrepreneurs. In each episode, my guests provide resources, valuable tips, and inspiration. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strength to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I'm so glad that you can join us today. And I'm going to introduce my guest, Natasha Pearl Hansen, and she's a comedian, creator, podcast host, and entrepreneur. She began her comedy career in 2006 at Second City, Chicago, and over the course of a few years, she performed, wrote for, and directed dozens of shows. She found her love for stand-up in 2010 and has moved back, performing in countless festivals, as well as headlining Armed Forces Entertainment. And she is the My Breakup Registry that she founded is a crowdfunding and an item and experience registry platform, as well as a resource center for people going through breakups. So we're going to hear a little bit about that background in a moment. And then welcome to the show, Natasha. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This is fun. <laughs> right. We've already so, been laughing our butts off before we even started. <laughs> So, so Natasha, if you could just share a little bit about how you got started and um, what you're doing. Um, well, how I got started in comedy or how I got started in entrepreneurship or both. <laughs> well, I, I guess, guess all of it. All I guess they, they kind of go hand in hand, but I, I started in comedy a long time ago with Second City. Like you said, um, you know, I just knew that I wanted to perform. I didn't realize that I would want to do stand up. That was kind of a fluke. Um because I just realized without having to rehearse with other people, life was a lot simpler. (laughs) So, um, but I did improv for years, migrated into stand-up in 2011. And when I got into the entertainment world in Chicago, starting out, I knew it was going to take a lot more than just being funny or having talent to make your own break. Um, I just knew it was uh, much more intricate than that. The entertainment industry requires a lot of, hustle, a lot of knowledge, a lot of different hats you can wear, a lot of willingness to create your own stuff. And so when I moved to LA in 2011, I um, started uh, kind of working in production a little bit too, and events and all sorts of things just helped me understand the industry and get a little bit more background on how the like the business side of entertainment worked. I started my first production company in 2013, um, shot and produced a bunch of my own like pilots and series and sent them to festivals. I mean, festivals on festivals on festivals. I would apply to so many festivals every year and get into some, uh, win a couple. Um, and that got a really good, that got me a good track record in the entertainment industry, just like, you know, with some up and coming people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always had an entrepreneurial spirit when it came to entertainment. I just knew that it wasn't going to be as simple as showing up and getting cast in something. You know, I probably would be more like a Tina Fey where I would make my own stuff, cast myself in it, right. You know, just kind of wear a lot of, wear a lot of hats. You have to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had my first, big introduction to networks in 2016 or 17 when I had a pilot with a friend that came to um, the semifinals of NBC's playground competition. Mm -hmm. So um, the year before that, another pilot of mine with a friend had won a bunch of awards in LA. Um, So I kind of got introduced to some, you know, network people at NBC and Fox and CBS and um, just really hustled from there. Um, so when it came time to shoot my first comedy special, that was on my canceled wedding day. It was just an opportunity to take a situation that was a negative and spin it positive. I already had the director in place because I had worked with him for years. And um, so I just kind of made it happen. And then um, that led to my creation of my breakup registry. So <laughs> we can dive more into that more if you want. But that's just kind of my off the top of my head spewing of everything. <laughs> Well, definitely, because I think that uh, sounds like that's a terrific story. So what happened to bring that about? 
my break of registry or the special? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's start with the break of registry. Well, that one came after the special. Um, but so I guess I'll start with that. Um, in 2019, I was supposed to get married. Um, we had already postponed the wedding a couple times and, uh, it just wasn't working out. And so I was stuck in contract with the venue. I decided to shoot my first comedy special that day and, uh, called, I was supposed to get married today and it's out on Amazon came out in April of this year. Um, in early 2020, um, after a couple months of pretty endless, not working out relationship stuff, my fiance and I officially split. So, um, it was then that I was sitting up at night, you know, looking through our wedding registry, kind of deciding what I wanted to do with it. And I was jokingly going to change it to Natasha's marrying Natasha and send it out to all my friends and, um, and, uh, create, uh, a registry for the things I was losing in my split. And then I was like, how is that not a thing? So the pandemic hit and I was like, well, I've got all the time in the world right now to focus on this. So I did. And I spent 2020 building that and I launched the day after my special drop. So I launched, I was supposed to get married today, comedy special, and then my breakup registry.com the next day. (laughs) That's great timing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So how, how is that, how's that been? I mean, that, that, it sounds like such a great idea, but is it something that you had to kind of explain or do people, you feel they get it right away? Um, they get it pretty much right away. Originally the name was going to be something else. And I realized I kind of had to spell it out for people. Like if it, you know, my breakup registry pretty much says it, they're like, Oh, I can register after a breakup. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. (laughs) So you can crowdfund and item register just like you would for a wedding registry. I built Mm -hmm. it kind of like, um, honey fund, which is the registry that I was using. Um, also I've been in love with, uh, Sarah, the founder of Honey Honey Fund for a long time. I saw her on Shark Tank years ago, another show that I've watched like consistently forever. And um I just thought it was a really smart move for her to create this platform for people that were getting married to be able to fund their trips and things they needed to do to make their wedding a success. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, why shouldn't we do that for breakups? That's when people need money and things and love the most. So mm-hmm. let's have at it. Let's take that space over. So... It just seems like something that, as you're saying, well, sure, why not? It makes sense. But then it's it's one of those things that also you're like, okay, so what, why why isn't something like this more popular? But I guess you know when you, it's it's something that almost seems obvious, but you know I guess that's what people think of and they don't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you yeah. you had the idea and, and really did it right. It did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's been a lot and I've been going through a lot since I launched as well. And so it's just, uh, it's a lot to be the solo founder. There's a lot of things you have to think about. Uh, you know, I'm not a tech founder, so I had to hire developers. I had to dive into this whole new world that I'd never been in before. Um, but luckily I have a huge network of people. I have a huge network of people that I've helped, a huge network of people that appreciate and love what I'm building and what I do. And, um, yeah. So I just have been kind of leaning into whoever I can, you know, trying to give back to them, whatever I can and, uh, you know, shaking hands and <laughs> figuring it out, <laughs> figuring it out. So what, what are your overall plans for it? Is it, are you looking to evolve it to something else at some point or? Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty flexible as a founder and that's a weird thing to say. I know what I want, but it's not about what I want. You know, when you create something for public, for the public, you have to figure out what it is that they're looking for. So I have a business plan that I started real, that's really robust of what I wanted to create over the next year and a half. But I kept the MVP of my launch pretty simple so I could get feedback, figure out what people need, uh, what people are looking for, and adjust course accordingly. Because otherwise, tech gets really expensive to undo and fix. So um, so I decided to kind of just keep it simple at first. Um, I have a lot of ideas of what I'd like to do. Um, I have a big meeting tomorrow, actually, with a... Uh, travel and hotel and wellness chain to bring them on board 
And I have an amazing PR team on board with this right now, uh, Jonas PR Holler. And so they're helping me push. Um, so it's great to be able to have the option because I can do a lot myself. I do do mm-hmm. a lot myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be able to attach to a big brand and then infuse it with my brand and then mm-hmm. combine forces with public relations um, mm-hmm. and just really t- tell the story to people so they understand that this is a safe place for them to come, to lean mm-hmm. into their community and to get the things that they need and to be open and honest about what they're going through. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the whole goal is like, let's change the way we handle these breakup situations. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't, it right. doesn't need to be this embarrassing thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense because usually well, you know, maybe not usually it depends on what the circumstance was, but mm-hmm. uh, if people are at a point where they have to explain everything that happened and, you know, maybe get some blowback depending on uh, family or friends, it, you know, it, it could just be stressful anyway, but then you add yeah. all those years to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just want to create a space for um, people to just feel like they can, you know, be reminded that there's good around the corner, take care of themselves, you know, get out into the world, whatever they need, whatever they need. <laughs> so what, while you, and it sounds as though you, since you this dropped like right after you did your special, you know, how difficult was that now to be wearing all those hats at that same time that you're preparing for your special. And now you're also preparing. It was a lot. It was a lot. And it's been a lot. I've been going through a lot of personal stuff since that time. And Mm -hmm. the amount of time I've had to, to focus has been really choppy. Um, It's really hard to focus on scaling and building and doing everything alone when other things are really messy. Um, But you know, I've maintained as best I can. (laughs) So, you know, there's a lot of things that I try to do to take care of myself. There's a lot of things that I don't do to take care of myself. And that's also why I'm pushing that in the registry because um, it's really important. You know, we only have Mm -hmm. one vessel and once our body gets tired and our brain gets tired and our heart's worn out, you don't really have much else to give. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you've, you've built a really good team around you to help you put all these projects together. You know, people Mm -hmm. you can kind of call on when you need to get things done. It's really just my friends and my close circle. Um, you know, I, I really have killer friends, uh, people that support and love what I'm building and that trust what my direction is. Mm -hmm. Um, my friends have been an unreal support. And one day I hope to blow this thing up so big that I can take them all on a wonderful <laughs> excursion <laughs> of my own. But, um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty crazy. And, um, you know, you really over the course of working in entertainment for so long, um, thankfully, you know, in that industry, I've surrounded myself with good people. I've conducted myself well. Mm-hmm. I carry myself in a classy manner, even though I work in comedy, that seems like a, like a, like a backwards statement, but <laughs> you know, you can carry yourself well and treat people well. Um, I believe that most of my interactions with people are positive. And so, um, you know, I just try my best. I try my best to put good out there. And then when I do need a favor from somebody, it's not like I'm just coming in and using them. It's like, mm-hmm. I've already like, I will give anybody any resource they need. I will give anybody any advice. Like there's nothing that I have access to that somebody I know is not going to have access to. Mm-hmm. You know, I've sat on the mm-hmm. phone with friends in the comedy over the pandemic and given them advice on how to create uh, media kits and pitch decks and, and all sorts of things. And so, and how to get brand deals. And so these things that I'm really good at, I'm happy to pass this information along too, because I worked really hard to figure it up out for myself. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. why not, why not share information? Mm-hmm. That's like, you know, Elon Musk's whole, I, anyone who's successful is very willing to share, mm-hmm. um, if you don't, if you don't share, um, it means you think that there's not enough for everybody mm-hmm. and scarcity mm-hmm. mindset can really screw you over as a founder, especially. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. And as far as you putting these things together, um, you know, did you have any challenges as far as branding or even trying to decide how you're going to brand 
uh, what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy trying to figure out how to build a company, right? You know, I, I was doing a lot of research as to even just the developers I wanted to work with, what type of people they are, what type of entrepreneurs they work with. Um, because I wanted my money to be used wisely. I wanted it to be going to, to people that I trust what they stand for. Um, I'm all about diversity in every way, shape and form. My background's really diverse. My friends are very diverse. And so, um, I hired a team that made sense for me in that regard. Um, Mm -hmm. I also had, you know, interviewed a couple teams that did a lot of outsourcing and I did the digging to find out what that meant and what Mm -hmm. kind of pay those outsource workers were getting. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't hire anybody who would outsource without making sure that those workers were getting 80% of what I was paying or more. Um, so there's certain things you have to do. Um, it can be really tough because, you know, you have people that stand for something like, you know, they're going to be a vegan because they believe in animal rights, but then they don't find out that a person they're hiring is doing X, Y, and Z behind the scenes. So it's like, you have to be thinking about so much and you're not going to always get it right. But when I was deciding to build um, my brand book and figure out what kind of company I wanted to build and what kind of morals and values I wanted behind it, um, I had met Sophia Amorosa for the first time and she was about to launch business class. So, um, we had kind of developed a personal like acquaintanceship and, um, and then I started taking business class so I could actually dive into the steps of branding, marketing, all that stuff. And I hired an incredible branding and web designer and she built exactly like the logo and design that I needed and wanted. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was just a process, you know, just like Mm -hmm. with anything, I made some mistakes. I had to have some hard conversations because I had hired somebody at first to do branding and I thought it was not good. (laughs) (laughs) And I, and I loved this person, but I didn't Mm -hmm. like her work and I had to talk to her about it. And she Mm -hmm. was actually really appreciative and we negotiated and, she paid me back and Mm -hmm. we agree, we agreed that this just wasn't the place for us to come together as a team. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just a ride, man. You figure it out as you go. (laughs) You figure it out as you go. True. And I I think that is something that uh, often people will find out as they're going into business that they have to have those hard conversations at times. Mm -hmm. And it's a totally different thing. But now you're the one who's kind of at the center of all this activity and you've got to decide how to delegate and have, you know, hiring, all those things that you're saying, I, I, it seems that a lot of times people don't really even know what that's going to be like until they're in it. Yeah, exactly. You really don't. There's no blueprint for this. Mm-hmm. There's no blueprint mm-hmm. for anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can listen to people's podcasts and read their books and hear about their story. You can get tips on how to operate. You can get mm-hmm. tips on how to sell. You can get tips on how to market. But everything is its own beast, and you don't know. And you don't know what's going to work for you. Mm-hmm. Um, the founder of Li- Where Lively, you know, Lively, the brand, mm-hmm. um, she and I had a conversation and uh, she ended up finding that ambassador marketing was like her thing. She had built this huge ambassador community, has a hugely successful brand because of it, was able to scale it and sell it and stay, the, stay on the board of it. And like her story is incredible. Not everybody can do that. You know, if Mm -hmm. I tried to get an ambassador team behind my brand, I don't think that would be the move, you know? So, I mean, Mm -hmm. you just don't know what's going to work for your company. You have to be Mm -hmm. open-minded. That's a good point. Very, very good point. Because a lot of times people will see what someone else is doing and then they'll think, oh, I'm going to do that. And I'll Mm -hmm. just follow those same steps. And (laughs) Yeah. 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 Yeah, You just don't know. You just don't know. (laughs) Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of that. Um, I guess belief, but also that's kind of sold to a lot of people too, that, you know, they're going to show you exactly how to do this because they did it, but there's so many variables that Mm -hmm. people don't take into consideration. Yeah. That's why all courses don't work for people. That's why Sophia's was really great because it really sectioned it out for founders to be able to dive into what they need to create in each facet, like the branding, the marketing, the employee guidebook, hiring process, like Mm -hmm. all these different, you know, segments of the process of building a successful company that Mm -hmm. apply to any company. So Mm -hmm. 
that's why hers was really great. Um, but yeah, you, there's, there's no roadmap. It's just, it's a ride and you get jerked around on it and you end up finding your footing eventually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And that's, that's the, that's the part is the whole process is, is learning. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, and once you're, you're thinking of yourself as a founder, people are, um, interacting with you that way. Did that feel strange at first as you were getting into these different projects? Um, like interacting as a founder? Yeah, like really, I feel a lot of times that, you know, with women particularly, they have to see themselves in these roles that sometimes they don't, you um, know, and you know, you feel any... <laughs> I didn't, you know, I did my first talk on this last November for Startup Grind. I feel really comfortable speaking in front of people, A, because I've been doing it for so long, and B, mm-hmm. because I believe in what I created. I'm so excited about it. Um, and then, you know, I've had um, mostly people in my life that have been supportive. I have others that have not. I have others that have uh, definitely ridiculed my decisions and questioned certain things. It really tells you a lot about who you're surrounding yourself with if mm-hmm. that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, as a founder, you really can't afford to have people in your life that are going to tell you at every turn that whoever you're talking to isn't worth it or because you don't know. You don't know who's right. going to be worth it. You do not know. Um, so it's pretty eye opening when you kind of scale back and look at like, OK, you don't need to be supported or like worshipped or praised all the time for what you're doing. But you do want to have people give you constructive criticism, not just criticism. Um you know, some people can't handle seeing others succeed or have ideas or doing something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and those people shouldn't stick around you when you're trying to do those things. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the thing. You you may not really find that out until you're in that position. <laughs> <That's> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. They reveal themselves as to what they really think. <laughs> yeah. Doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that can be eye opening for some people. Yeah, you learn a lot about yourself in this process. You learn a lot mm. about others in this process too. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at the at the end of the day you have to know like where is your heart? What is what is your intention? Are you trying to leave a good stamp on people? Are people misunderstanding who you are? Because if they are, then drop them. Mm-hmm. If people mm-hmm. don't don't get you, um and they're not saying the things about you that match up to how you know you are, then mm-hmm. it's going to it's going to make you fumble a lot. And I've definitely done some fumbling too, but I'm figuring it out. (laughs) Well, that's, yeah, that's normal. That's normal stuff. And that's, that's a good stuff for people to hear because they they realize that they're not supposed to be perfect of, you Mm -hmm. know, of the gate, every, everything's supposed to be perfect. And I think, you know, as we were saying before about people thinking sometimes there's a blueprint or exact steps People can beat themselves up because they think they were supposed to do something a certain way or be a certain way. And, and yeah. so, you know, they realize that that's not the case. Yeah. yeah. There's no one way to be. Um, I've always been open and honest about my failures. I've opened up about a lot of things that are not pretty. Um, so, you know, you, it's not like you can't be a founder that can be told that you're doing something wrong. I'm happy if somebody comes up and tells me like, Hey, I don't think you're going about this the right way. I like that. Mm -hmm. But there is just, um, there is a, there is a way to communicate with people in this Mm -hmm. space that is helpful. And there's a way to communicate with people in this space that is just standoffish. And I've, most people I think are pretty great. Like, I kind of think that in general, I think most people have redeeming qualities. <laughs> um, and uh, when you've worked in entertainment for a long time as well, you know, and I'm Midwest roots, so I feel like I have a pretty good sense of people pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. So that helps a lot, too. Um, mm-hmm. The thing in the founder and entrepreneur space is everyone's just focused on their own stuff. They're just trying to succeed. Mm-hmm. So you know, a lot of people are afraid to move into this space because they're like, oh, what if I tell somebody my idea and they try to take it? And I'm like, they're busy trying to make their thing happen. Like, they don't got time for that. (laughs) Don't worry about other people trying to take your stuff. Like, just tell people what you're struggling with. They're not going to know what you need if they don't know you're struggling. People don't know how to help you if you're not telling them where you need help. Right. You know, so 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a great point. That happens a lot with, with um, books or, or, you know, people say, well, I have an idea for a story, but I don't want to say it because someone might take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, I, have you read Big Magic? Have you read that? No, but I've heard it mentioned. So now I'm going to have to do that because I have heard this. Yeah, before, it's, so. it's great. It kind of helps mm-hmm. you get out of that mentality of mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. thinking that your ideas are just going to come out through you. Like your ideas are kind of like a, a live being and mm-hmm. they'll find a host. And uh, just because you tell somebody your idea doesn't mean they're going to become the host. You know, they have to have right. the willingness to make it manifested. And so, mm-hmm. um yeah, it's just that that fear of sharing that people need to get over. It really only mm-hmm. helps. And at the end of the day, what has been selling me to potential investors and selling my story to press or whatever it is, it's my story. Mm-hmm. It's my mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. So if anybody right. else tries to take it, it's not going to be genuine. It's not going to feel the same. So, right. Yeah. 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 So you just got to let your story be your story and trust it and live it, live in it and mm-hmm. let it, let it manifest through you. Exactly. And, and not hold back and be afraid because then nothing happens. A lot of times you don't take the, the leap because they're mm-hmm. so afraid to open up and then they're not asking, as you said, asking yeah. for the help. Yeah. They could to move forward and they, you know, it just stays inside them and someone else yeah. gets a great idea and they move with it. So that's exactly. That, yeah, I'm sure that happens uh, too much, um, too often. Um, but Natasha, can you please share where the listeners can find out more about you? Yeah. So you can read, uh, about me and find my, anything about, you know, my upcoming comedy tours on my website, which is nphcomedy.com. That stands for Natasha Pearl Hansen. So nphcomedy.com. All my socials are at nphcomedy. Um, my website is mybreakupregistry.com and all those socials are at my breakup registry, except for Twitter. Uh, that's at my breakup fund. So, uh, all those are really small. And I think I have like four Twitter. I haven't like tweeted on behalf of my registry and I've been too busy building it. So don't worry about, don't worry about Twitter, <laughs> but, um, you know, cause it's funny cause you have to build the company first and then you got to get the socials going and you got to get, it's just so many pieces. It's so many pieces, so many pieces. So, but we just, you figure it all out. <laughs> right. Right. And then you also have a podcast. I do. And that's called future role model and that's on mm-hmm. all platforms and on social media at future role model. Um, and that's a, that's a conversation with various entertainers, uh, entrepreneurs, founders, whoever it may be, athletes about, uh, the story of their failures that led to their successes. And mm. so it's kind of my thing is taking the failures and turning them into positives. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, particularly because a lot of times, especially, you know, I think people in entertainment, Industry, a lot of times you may hear, um, oh, so and so, they, you know, they just kind of popped up out of nowhere, or, or at least mm-hmm. it, it seems to be that way. But then you don't hear about what they've been through before they got to that. Yeah, but, yeah. And podcasting you know. with all these people, you know, especially other comedians, it's been pretty eye-opening because, you know, we've there's so many people in that in- industry where we've known forever. You're like, Oh, so-and-so has been my friend for 10 years, but you don't know their dad's name. You don't know mm-hmm. their story. You don't mm-hmm. know where they went to high school. You don't know what made them get into comedy. We don't mm-hmm. talk about those kinds of things when we're hanging out at a comedy club, you know, mm-hmm. you, they don't come up. Mm-hmm. So when I have these one-on-ones with people, I'd walk away floored. I would find out some stuff that would make me cry that I would be like, oh my mm-hmm. God, I've spent years with you at comedy clubs and I didn't know you grew up uh, as an Asian immigrant who mm-hmm. had to hide in their grandma's uh, nur- nursing home under her table and fed scraps because you were illegal. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know that about you. Holy shit. Like, let me, right. let me, let me, I feel honored to mm-hmm. have found out some of these stories about people and mm-hmm. be able to share it. I'm like, let me share this and have people understand like you're, you're not just somebody that's on stage telling boohoo, whatever jokes, like mm-hmm. you've seen, you've been through some stuff and mm-hmm. you're a real person, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. 
Yeah. That's the important part because then that's, that's what people can connect with because they see that you are, uh, you know, a, you're big. You're <laughs> someone who's been through things yeah. just like anyone else has. Everybody's and, got yeah. a story and, you know, no oh, matter yeah, which way you want to bring it out, you know, if, if you want to be an entertainer, great. If you want to be a founder, great. If you want to work at Burger King, great. But everybody's got a story. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, you just, that's all you've got is what you've right. got. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Share true. it and do something with it, I guess. You know, even if it's just yeah. meeting somebody at a bus stop and extending a kind word or some understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all, that's all we have to give each other. That's true. That's, that's another, another great point, um, for people to, to take away that they know that, um, you mm-hmm. know, it's even down to it being that simple, but that's also very powerful. Yeah. As well. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That's very true. Um, it's that connection that really makes, makes a big difference. So, mm-hmm. you know, is there any other projects that you have coming up that you may want to share right now or are they um, all? On a percolate. You know, I don't, I don't want to jinx it, so I probably won't, <laughs> but I'm definitely really leaning into this cross section of entertainment and technology that I am at. And so, mm-hmm. um, there's a couple things I'm working on to push out, um, the registry story a little bit more in an interesting manner. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just really trusting that process and praying that it comes out the way I hope it can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's all well, I'll say. <laughs> well, it definitely sounds like you've got a lot, um, a lot of stuff happening and you're working on and, and just creating and, and that, um, sounds really, really exciting, Natasha. So, you know, yeah. it's been a wonderful conversation. So I just want to ask, um, do you have any final thoughts to share? No final thoughts. I think that was an enough of a, Blah, 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 of all the things, <laughs> you know, I guess just, uh, just try to be good to the people around you. And if there's something toxic in your life, get it out so that you can continue to bring to the world what you're meant to bring to the world. Mm. And that's, that's really important yeah. for people to, uh, to really live with and, um, act on in yeah. their lives. Cause I think it, um, that would make a lot of difference to people's stress and their happiness levels if, if they could do more of that. So yeah, I think that's yeah. wonderful, wonderful exactly. advice. Exactly. So um, I want to thank you so much for joining me, Natasha. It's really been thank a great you. conversation. Thank you. Yeah, I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much for your time and you have a really nice spirit. So thank you for that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Great laughs and good spirits really get at my heartstrings. <laughs> well, I try to. I, I think I think working from home makes it better. It either not makes commuting. you happier or go crazy. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm not so. commuting and I'm not in the office, so it's you know I, I'm much happier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> certainly. Okay. So. Uh, well, this has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> Bye. Um, Everyone, I know you enjoyed this show. Please make sure you stop by Natasha's um, website and check out everything that she's doing. It sounds really great. And I really hope this was a good inspiration for you if you are looking to start some projects. So um, like I said, definitely stop by and check out what she's doing. So once again, it's been Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>